by his perfect obedience the lord jesus by his perfect obedience and sacrifice of himself which he through the eternal spirit once offered up unto god had fully satisfied the justice of his father and purchased not only reconciliation but an everlasting inheritance in the kingdom of heaven for all those whom the father has given unto him <laughs> Through his obedience, the Lord Jesus gained salvation for his people. Through his obedience, he <clears throat> it is only through his obedience and uh, he made a perfect sacrifice. The Lord Jesus obeyed perfectly. Now you must think of Christ being the last Adam. He's the last Adam, the first Adam. Where he was again, where he was given a simple test, failed, and we saw previously that it pleased God when Adam disobeyed him, when Adam fell, because Adam is not going to be our federal head. Adam is not the one to whom we will look and say, "Oh, this is God's beloved son." It is Jesus Christ. <clears throat> So Adam has to fall, and that fall caused Christ to come. And now Christ being the perfect man, fully of God and fully having a human nature, by his perfect obedience and sacrifice, he for one time, offered himself to God through the eternal spirit. It is a one time because he is such a perfect offering. All other offerings have been temporal and recurring. When man had to offer a sheep or a, a lamb or a pigeon, he had to come back again. But Christ, because the lamb did not obey, the lamb cannot obey, and men failed. Christ, he is your representative, my representative, came in the likeness of men, obeyed God in every way, fulfilled all the commandments that is needed of righteousness. <clears throat> Even to sacrifice his life, to to fully satisfy the father's demand of justice. Man for man. He fully paid the price. Can someone read Romans 5.19 for me, please? <clears throat> okay, let me read it. And thank you, Ravi, for scrolling it down. And uh, Romans 5.19 says, For as by one man's obedience, many were made sinners. And you must remember the word many, especially in Romans 5, means both all and not all. Because when it says many were made sinners, yes, in one sense, everyone was born of sin. In another sense, many were made sinners because not all are going to be sinners because Christ is going to come and save them. So by the obedience of one, shall many be made righteous. And this is what we call the imputed righteousness of Christ. By one, we were all made sinners. Adam's sin was imputed to us. If God can impute Adam's sin to us, God can definitely impute Christ's righteousness to us. That is justice. And how can we say there is no justice with God if God does not give every man an opportunity? 
God is just. <clears throat> Hebrews 9.14 How much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offer himself without spot to God purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Purge your conscience from what? From dead works. What is the dead works? All the self-righteous works that we people do to attain salvation. And we appease our conscience. Oh, I have done this. People, I have heard people say, oh, I went to Mother Teresa's uh, orphanage and I was moved with compassion. I gave them. And after giving them some donation, I felt so happy. That works. People give anadana or people give food for people to eat. What is that? Uh, they say something called uh, uh, service to man is service to God. He says, purge your conscience from dead work to serve the living God. What does it mean to serve the living God? Acknowledge his works. This is the work of God that you believe on him, John 6, 6. Acknowledge that the mediator between God and man is the man chosen by God himself is Christ Jesus and no one else. <clears throat> Verse 16, for where a testament is, there must also be a necessity to the death of the tester. So that the testament becomes effective, the will becomes effective. What the Father has given unto his unto us has to become effective. And praise God, he he died and he rose again to see that the testament is fulfilled in our lives. Hebrews 10 14. For by one offering, he has perfected forever them that are sanctified. By that one offering, he not only justified them, he made them perfect and he sanctified them. He sanctified them. We, are being, we have been sanctified by the precious blood of Christ. We stand before him being accepted in the beloved, holy and righteous. Because he is my mediator and he satisfied fully the righteous demand of God for justice. Christ is the only mediator between God and man. There is no other mediator. Ephesians 5, 2, and walk in love as Christ has loved us and given himself for us in a, as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. Look at, the, look at how the Holy Spirit caused Apostle Paul to write. He says, as Christ has loved us, it is in the past tense, in eternity past, God the Father has chosen us and God and Christ knew whom God has chosen. And he said, all those whom God has chosen, he set his love on them. He has loved us even before we knew him. Before we loved him, he was the one who loved us first. And had given himself for us an offering. How is that offering? It is a sweet smelling offering. Us. That offering was so pleasant to the nostrils of God. The work of flesh, read Isaiah chapter one, 
the work of flesh god is so angry with them with the work of flesh he says your stink has come to my nostril religious works are stink in 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 god's nostril but christ he was god's beloved son because he obeyed him perfectly he lived that life that god was so well pleased in him that god could say this is my beloved son in whom i'm well pleased a sacrifice that is perfectly given he is the perfect lamb of god without any blemish or spot he is the perfect lamb of god that god in that lamb was in the in the very bosom of god beloved lamb of god and that lamb became our mediator <clears throat> Romans 3:25 and 26 whom god has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the forgiveness of sins that are passed through the forbearance of god to declare i say at at this time his righteousness that he he might be just and the justifier of him that believeth on him to declare to pronounce <clears throat> to make that declaration the judge is making that declaration who is the judge the sovereign supreme judge god himself he might be just and the justifier of him that believeth on him through his obedience the lord jesus gained salvation for his people that is you and me also by this obedience he purchased not only reconciliation what did he do he got us an everlasting inheritance an inheritance that will that is for all eternity in the kingdom of god heaven for all whom the father gave him you know in uh, daniel daniel chapter 9 daniel realizes that the, what uh, uh, jeremiah has prophesied that the 70 weeks have come to an end he says so he prays 70 weeks are determined upon the people and upon the holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of our sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity mind you that 70 weeks is representing christ he was the one to finish the transgression and to make an end for sins and and to make a reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness only through christ is that brought in and to seal up the vision and prophecy to anoint the most holy <clears throat> and and after three score and two weeks shall the messiah be cut off not for himself and the people of the prince shall this shall come that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary and the end thereof shall be with a flood and unto the end of the war desolation are determined 
Christ, the Messiah, was cut off. For what? Not just to fully satisfy the Father's demand of justice, but also to bring reconciliation. Now that we have peace with God. Now there is no condemnation. You have peace with God. You have been reconciled to the one to whom, with whom you have become an enemy. We were all God haters and we were all enemies of God. But through the, through the de death and through the life and death and resurrection of Christ, he purchased peace, not just peace, but he reconciled us. Like we studied in Romans 8, we have become the adopted children of God. Not just that, an everlasting inheritance in the kingdom of heaven. Colossians 1.19, for it pleased God, it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell and and having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him I say whether they be things in earth or things in heaven, all things to reconcile unto himself. What belongs to him? He paid the price. This is what we call a ransom. He paid the ransom money. I think Matthew 10, 20, he says, he came to ransom many. Ephesians 1, 11, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined, predestinated according to, to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. He says, we have been predestinated according to the purpose of God, who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. He is the only one who has free will. And he does what he wants. And in his counsel, you and I have been named to be redeemed and to inherit the kingdom of heaven. Which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased position unto the price of his glory. John 17, 2. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. All that the Father has given him, God has given him power so that they will have eternal life. The Father and the Son are working in perfect coordination, tandem, that there is no conflict in between them. All that the Father has chosen the Son has died for them and the Spirit opens the eyes and draws them unto the Son. Perfect unity in Trinity. <clears throat> and, and let me read Hebrews 9.15. And for this cause, he's the mediator of the new covenant that by the means of death for the redemption of the transgression that were under the first testament, they, were called, they who were called might re receive the promise of eternal inheritance. This eternal inheritance has been reserved for us in heaven but it has been paid for by Christ, our mediator. That is why it is the mediator who 
who lived that perfect life of obedience to the Father. That is what we look up to. That is what we run to him. And that is what we claim of Christ. We are being, and he may be knowing that we fall, we fail. We constantly fail. If any man says he's without sin, he's a liar. Even on the dying moment, I'm still in sin. But for the grace of God, who has set us free and who has covered all our sins and all our iniquity, Christ is our only blessed hope. There is none beside Christ. Don't don't depend on your own strength. Don't depend on your own works of flesh. It is Christ and Christ alone. May God help us to love this mediator and to look to him.